don't say that he raped her. You know, my heart goes out to him because at the end of the day, that is his father. Around the age of uh, 14 or so, she she had met my father. He was 30 years old than me. I was 14 and he was 29 when we got together. Whatever story his father has told him, it's landed his mother in prison where she gave birth to him. I had it all mapped out. I had everything planned. I was going to go to school. Lee Barber was adopted by her grandparents because her mother was uh, in and out of prison as well as her father, and uh, her mother was also a, um, a drug addict. I was an honor roll student. I was very um, introverted. I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't have a lot of trust issues because um, I grew up um, going to visit both of my parents in prison. She she wanted to have his baby, which she found out she was pregnant. And, you know, me being her first first and only child. That they suspected that I was pregnant and gave me two options of either forcing me to have an abortion or giving him a statutory rape. Like the only thing was, I wanted the baby. I didn't want to have to go through the whole process of having to give birth to my husband. I wanted to have my life. But when you're in love, regardless of if the man is two times her age and is literally raping her, they don't know the difference because we lack that. We want we want that love from a man. I can't understand why they were so uh, ill bit against him, why he was so bad to them when they didn't know him. I couldn't understand why he was the bad guy to them when he was the everything to me. The story of April Barber is touching to me because, you know, a lot of women of color fall in love with men and they are asked to do things that, you know, consciously you shouldn't really do. They, you know, begin plotting on how to be able to allow her to be with my dad. And one of the solutions was, uh, well, maybe uh, I'll give you a gun and, and you can shoot them. I just wonder why no one bothered to quote unquote save me. While everyone was so busy whispering, you know, in this small town and seeing what's going on, but no one bothered to get in and intervene. Um, this was coming from my father to my mom. Uh, she didn't want them dead, nor did she want to shoot them, so they went to another option. She was confused, convinced that if she scared her grandparents, that they would allow her to date this man. I would guess I was hypnotized, but I didn't realize it. Because love sometimes can hypnotize you into believing things that aren't true. My dad provided my mother with a, a can of gasoline. After he instructed her to go ahead and, and set the house on fire, she had knocked the gasoline over, go ahead and lit a cigarette, dropped it on the floor, ran out the house to the neighbor's house, um, and they called the police and the fire department. But this man saw a beautiful 13-year-old and he raped her. He took advantage of her. And not only did he take advantage of her sexually, he manipulated her to commit a heinous crime, to set a house on fire where two people, elderly people, died. I was 15 and pregnant. I was just barely, I was two months pregnant when I got locked up. Pregnant, went to um, went to prison, had an accord-appointed attorney who only visited twice, who coerced me into um, signing a plea bargain 106 days after giving birth, saying that I would be wasting the taxpayers' time and money if I took it to trial. The juvenile system failed her. Her attorneys failed her. The system failed her because April was crying out for help. I was 15 when I was questioned by them with no adult friends. All of my life um, to this point was um, formed by what white people thought of a mixed relationship and a mixed child. And so when you take a plea deal, it's now April, the attorney, and the prosecutor that's looking to this case. There are no jurors. There's no no evidence that's going to come up. My attorney was white, but oh, the DA, all of them were white. There are laws that are supposed to protect juveniles, but they don't because they want to railroad. They're not even thinking about April as a 15-year-old that's facing two life sentences. They're thinking about her as a black woman. My understanding, it looks like an open plea that she took, that she didn't have any idea how much time she was going to be sentenced, and her attorney failed her by allowing her to take a plea agreement that 
essentially is sending her to prison for the rest of her life. They never uh, questioned the fact that our age difference was so fast was never questioned back then. It was never a matter of, hey, you know, he influenced her. Um, I never had a psychological evaluation. I've never been evaluated at all. But he had an evaluation that even remotely implied that I, he was under my influence. Nah, I don't believe so. He April was 13, 14 years old. There's no way that she can manipulate a 30-year-old man. And that's the excuse that that white man was going to give because of the fact that he was raping a 13-year-old woman. Um, it's definitely divisions of race between white and black in North Carolina. Uh, yes, uh, I would say that that more than, than one life was was wasted not only hers but the the almost 30 years um, that we could have spent together. My organization is called Fighting for Freedom and we decided to lock arms with April to see if we can ask the governor to give her a full clemency so that she can actually be here reunited with her son. They know that 30 years ago this little ex black girl committed this crime because she had this white guy who didn't want to kill her grandparents and she was thrown away for life and no one has bothered to go back and see what happened to April. Um, you know, what happened to her? Why did she do this? What led up to this? No one has ever evaluated the then me or the now me. And so I feel like all of that should be taken into consideration. It's never too late for justice. And we are seeking justice for April and her son. I think I have proven myself um, as far as that I have changed. Like I said, then I'm not the same irrational person. And I think that my story in itself could help deter people from making the same mistakes that I did.